Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Folu, and we have Tanmit Ishmit Gina Ashish. And today we'll be giving our presentation on our project management lessons learned while preparing for the 2010 Commonwealth Games. Just as a brief overview, uh, Commonwealth Games is basically a multi-sporting event held between like the, the countries in the Commonwealth of Nations. And the 2010 edition was hosted by India in its capital, New Delhi. And it was actually the most expensive Commonwealth Games ever. And India saw this as an opportunity to showcase its economic power and showcase its culture and heritage to the people. And now let's jump straight right into it. My first lesson learned states that early planning is required for such a colossal project. Trust me, as trivial as this sounds, this was not the case. As Ori rightfully said in one of his uh, slides, he said insufficient planning in early project activities actually causes mistakes. Now, due to the complexity in preparing these games, it is usually awarded seven years prior to the commencement of these games. And as expected, in November 2003, India won the bid to host these games. And according to the host city contract, which India submitted to while they were bidding for these games, it was stated that by May 2004, they would have their organizing committee ready. But in reality, this was not the case. This committee was only set up nine months after the stipulated date on February 2005. This was a clear indication that things were going in the wrong direction, but the Indian, the Indian government refused to budge. Also, they stated that they would start significant planning by January 2004, but this didn't happen until about two and a half years later in July 2006 with the appointment of consultants because these people had no prior experience on how to host such games or how to prepare for these games. And now, because of this, because of this negative effect, other things, have, other things were affected, a lot of domino effects. For instance, the general organizational plan, which was supposed to be formed in May 2004, was only formed in August 2007. And the importance of this GOP was to ensure that it, it gives people the details of what needs to be done, the amount of stadiums which needs to be worked on, which needs to be built, or which needs to be rehabilitated. But these things were not ready until August 2007. So co work commenced very late. And now my second lesson learned states that rules should be clearly defined and communicated to each concerned agency. Now, before the commencement of any project, the rules of every involved party or the major rules of every involved party should be clearly defined and it should be communicated to everyone so everyone knows what they are doing and they will know how they are going to get about it. By doing this, this helps prevent confusion, delays, conflict of interest and duplication of tasks. Also, these rules should be clearly outlined in the GOP, but unfortunately this GOP didn't even come out until August 2007. And in addition, to ensure a smooth project, we need to have like a central body or like an organization who is in charge of coordinating the activities of everyone. Now, initially, the OC, which is the organizing committee, they were in charge of doing this, but as time went on, they were converted to a non-government registered society, which meant that they lost their controlling power. Now, some of some things were affected. For instance, the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports and the OC had a clash. Both were arguing on who was going to work on the opening and closing ceremony. They kept trading words, trading emails, going back and forth, which lasted for about two months until the intervention of the CGF, which is the Confederation Games Federation. They had to come and intervene in it, and they were like, you know what, let the OC handle it. Also, the Press Information Bureau, they stated that they didn't know what they were going to do up until May 2009, after a meeting with the consultants, which left them with barely 18 months to prepare for such a colossal event. And in my opinion, this was very bad. Thank you. Thanks, Fulu. So the next lesson learned that I'm going to talk about is fully grasp the scope at the initial stages while framing the cost estimates. So as Fulu already mentioned, that CWG to 2010 was regarded as the most expensive Commonwealth Games ever. So in May 2003, the Chartered Accountant of Indian Olympic Association was appointed to uh, make, prepare the budget. So the budget was really high level. It was limited in scope, and it covered the initial cost or the just the repair and the renovation cost of these existing stadiums and some of the additional costs which involved the city beautification and fixing here and there and the sources of finances were calculated against these expenditure and a total of 1200 crores indian rupees which is approximately 180 million usd was prepared in the budget and was pre presented in the bid clearly government of india did not have ha have done unrealistic assessment of the budgets and as you can see in this because the scope was not entirely covered they were like in uh, in one of the audit reports it was observed that in year 2009 the estimated 
project ex expenditure was around 13,566 Indian uh, crores, Indian rupees, which is approximately 2 billion USD, which, was, which further increased in the year 2010, December, to 18,532.31 crores, Indian rupees, which is around 3 billion USD. So hi, and I want you to make a point that these numbers in excludes the external uh, investment from the other agencies. There was no proper planning, and which led to a piecemeal approach. And you can see very clearly, starting from, the, from April 2007, there were huge revision, upward revisions by September 2010. <coughs> and these were like fast revisions and at very short intervals, and it was like threefold increase. The next lesson learned that I would like to talk about is take appropriate steps to rationalize or reduce the cost across the vendors. So the organizing committee seemed not to have given much attention towards the appropriate steps in choosing the vendors and making some ne negotiations regarding the cost. So the approach that they opted was not very appropriate. One of the theories that they used was not putting the eggs into the same basket. For an example, they chose the bid of uh, Fast Track, which was 16 crores higher, 16 crores Indian rupees, which is approximately 3 million USD. So they chose Fast Track over SMAM, which was the lowest bidder in the, out of the competition. And they did not choose SMAM because SMAM was already involved in an, another project. But surprisingly, the same analogy was not used at other places. The other thing that they did was they looked at the overall cost with no regards to the individual prices quoted by the vendors. No negotiation were made. No effort was made to reduce the unit cost. And this led to the high cost in the project. So several instances from the uh, reports can be given that uh, they, they, in the name of reducing the cost, they reduce the scope. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, the next uh, lesson learned would be the phased approach to project implementation. So as we can see from the table three, that uh, there were, uh, uh, during the time of bid, the, commi uh, the organizing committee have uh, proposed four phased approach to this project. But when the, when the game was, uh, when the planning was on and the implementation they were doing, uh, there was no proper phase approach to the project. So uh, for, the, for instance, the phase one should have been started in January 20, 2004, and it should have been completed by 2006. But, uh, but, as we, uh, but, it, but according to the uh, uh, reality, the planning process and the implementation process started uh, later than 2006, which is they were not adhered to the uh, to the phased approach there was no phased approach to the to the project they uh, they were doing ra uh, they were doing randomly so so if they if they have stuck to the phased approach they could have uh, they could have learned the uh, lessons learned from the early phase so that they could have implemented later and the next one uh, next lesson learned would be incorporate proper methodologies for documentation to the project life cycle. As we know, the documentation is very important for the colossal project uh, like uh, Commonwealth Games and Olympics. But there were no, pro uh, no proper documentation instance in this, uh, uh, in this Commonwealth Games 2010. So what, uh, what uh, the auditors have found out that the Commonwealth, uh, the organizing committee have not uh, uh, maintained proper documentation during the games. So when when they were running, uh, overrunning the budget, and also they were delaying the project, uh, uh, the time frame, the they couldn't uh, track the characters who were involved in the uh, involved in the delay of the process as well as the overrun of the budget. So, uh, so according to us, the proper documentation should have been done so that they could have uh, uh, found the trace who who were involved in the in this mismanagement. So the next, uh, the lesson learned uh, will be taken care of by Gina. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, the next lesson learned is that large projects should establish quality assurance during the work in progress stage. Quality assurance being an integral part of the project management was not seriously taken care of by the CWG 2010. Uh, 
preparation of the CWG evoked widespread media attention, mainly because of the slow pace of work, budget overrun, compromise on the infrastructure, and also due to the delay in the compromise of the construction of the venues. These delays built over consecutive years had a serious quality deterioration on the project. Two of the instances that were widely criticized was the collapse of the 164-foot-long bridge 12 days prior to the game just outside the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium. And also, the team leaders from all the countries expressed their grave concern and quoted it as unsafe <coughs> and unfit for human habitation, the housing which was provided for the team leaders. Since most of the constructions were only uh, completed at the 11th hour, there was no adequate time for inspection and early testing. What should have been done, there should have been regular inspection, yearly inspection and proper documentation which should have given the authorities a visible status on the project and hence take, in hence take uh, decisions accordingly. The next lesson learned is the on procurement plan. Procurement plan should be developed initially during the scope definition. Procurement management plan is the process of acquiring the goods and services from outside performing organization. CWG clearly had undefined procurement management plan, mainly because uh, first the ineligible contractor. Uh, the company which won the contract had no previous experience on any architectural service of prescribed contracted value. Second of all, uh, the late procurement. Uh, OC awarded the procurement between February 2010 and September, February 2010 to September 2010, but it was not until a few weeks before the game started that the sports equipment arrived, and hence testing of, wasn't done. Uh, thirdly, global tendering procedures were not followed. Purchases were not made on a single tender basis. Last but not the least, but as of November 2010, when the games entered, uh, almost procurement around one rupees one crore was left unused. Uh, clearly, CWG didn't have, uh, they should have a proper procurement state of, statement of work initialized during the scope definition. This would have let them have a control on the procurements made and track the purchases. Thank you, Gina. Um, so yeah, we have been going through the, sorry about the screen thing. Uh, so the next lesson learned is that the risk management plan uh, should be prepared beforehand defining the mitigation strategies and it should be revised throughout the life cycle of the project. Uh, so this was evident based on some uh, incidents that happened. One of them, my colleague Gina just stated that the 164 foot bridge collapsed just 12 days before the games. And uh, after that, Indian Army was called in to build the same bridge in just three days. So they built it. The scope was cleared, but there was no sufficient planning that what would happen if uh, these type of incidents occur. The second example was that uh, it was reported that a lot of players and officials who came from other countries, they were given some accommodations, and those accommodations were not up to the uh, mark, or you know they didn't like it. And there were some uh, incidents like uh, water sewage problems, uh, bed problems. So at the last minute, they were shifted to hotels. They were not, uh, not a proper committee who would address those problems. So we believe that uh, the risk management is a very important part, and it should be integrated uh, throughout the project, uh, throughout the life cycle of the project, and uh, people should follow that in in order to reduce the uh, eff negative effects. So the next uh, th and the last lesson learned is that the. Um, the stakeholders with high interest should be kept uh, well informed and necessary arrangements should be made to manage their needs. This was, I believe, is a very positive uh, uh, lesson from the CWG because the organizing committee took uh, really high care of the citizens of the city and they informed them of the traffic changes, lane closures very early, like a lot of months early. And then they also ran a few practice sessions and trial runs to make them familiar with the situation when this thing would actually happen. And this is the first-hand account of a citizen uh, back in Delhi. He says that while there was a widespread criticism of the management and preparedness, there was a silver lining. The citizens of Delhi took it upon themselves in helping the preparations. The army built the required bridge in the record time, clearly. So this was, uh, I believe, one of the very positive things. Apart from this uh, uh, thing that happened, uh, uh, the traffic thing, the next thing that happened was um, a lot of people were relocated because 
major part of the city was required to be rebuilt or beautif beautified. So the low income groups and the labor people, they were relocated to outskirts of the city. Uh, they were not just left on their own. They were given the accommodations, and they used those accommodations to stay. The neg there was also a negative effect on this that they uh, it took them large time to commute to the city and work, uh, but but they were given uh, compensations for that. Um, at the end, we would like to conclude that the organizing committee was able to organize the games without compromising the scope or uh, requiring a, an extension. Uh, there are definitely mixed feelings about uh, the success of the project, uh, and it can be seen that there's a lot of room of improvement, given that th this, these were the first Commonwealth Games organized by the country. Uh, I would not say it was a major failure, but it's, it's like a starting step for the next opportunities that come in. The, the thing quoted by Pratik in his book, Inclusive Growth, that same thing, the how, however, the CWG did not attain that measure of success, though it was not a failure by any means, the end determines the act. So that the end of successful games would determine the coming uh, opportunities for the country, and they also brought a lot of tourists, which is good for uh, the economy of India. And in that way, CWG was quite successful in anyone's eyes. Thank you. Now, certainly there's a lot of lessons learned, but in your mind, what are the top three things that would have the greatest impact on that would have made this more successful? If you could go back and redo the project, what are the top three changes you would make? Uh, I would say that the planning is one of the biggest problems that was seen in the CWG games. The cost uh, estimation was the second big problem uh, that could be improved. And pardon me? Probably risk mitigation techniques. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and probably the risk mitigation techniques. Yeah. And I really think that the initial planning that is really important, as he said, that we had we, we need to follow the phased approach. So we had a lot of time, but we we start at the later stages. I think we started working on the project in 2007, so which was like we wasted a lot of time. So early planning and proper due diligence as the initial cost estimates. I know that in, in at the very start, you cannot take all of the requirements, but it's important to properly get into the places, understand the situation, and then make the estimates, which was not clearly done. Um, pardon her for saying we. Oui. She's from India, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Question here. So um, <laughs> for this project, I believe the success criteria was they, they didn't compromise time. They, they had to be, uh, everything had to be done before the commencement of the games. And also they didn't compromise scope, all the required stadia, all the required um, training complexes and everything else required to ensure the athletes were working pro uh, progressively. Everything was provided adequately prior to the commencement of this game. So I believe the scope and the time, without compromising both of them, I believe those were the criteria for measuring success for this game. Okay. You had a follow-up question? Well, I don't know anything, but the other question, can you tell a little bit about the project manager of this project and his credentials, maybe? Um, so we, we gathered all our facts from the report of Auditor General of India. So those reports were made public. But the project manager is a, is, is a body that seems to be the organizing committee. So the names, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's the Sports Authority of India. Sports yeah, yes, so, we, so it was built out of Sports Authority, but the organizing committee as a body took care of the PM process. Mm -hmm. And Suresh? Suresh Kalmari, maybe. Well, he was the head, right? Yeah. He was the head, yeah. Suresh Kalmari. You just mentioned that the, there was not enough expertise. I'm trying to guess if they have enough expertise, whoever was in charge of this. No, like, while, while they started the games, when they formed the committee, the members of the committee had no prior experience on how to organize such games, right? So that's why they um, hired the consultants in 2006 to help them in preparing for the games. There was a question. Question on the numbers. Yeah, it shows a dramatic increase, but between 2003 and 2010, yeah. inflation was running at between 10 and 13 percent. Mm -hmm. And even if you take 2009 to 10, if you include inflation in the total, the actual escalation is under 5 percent or something. I was just looking at the numbers. 
Inflation or they just no, they, they actually, I think Tanmeet would be able to answer this. The cost estimates were, yeah. Like, I really didn't, uh, I didn't really get the question, like where? Okay, so 2009 and 10, you had two numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, inflation between, at that period in time was around 10%. Okay. Right. Now, if I take 15,000 and say, I think it was 15,000 something and 18,000, and if I add 15,000. No, no, the, the yeah. previous slide was. <coughs> <coughs> the previous so one, yeah. Looking at these numbers, yeah. uh, all I'm saying is that did the auditors build inflation into these numbers, or they just claimed that you started with 297 and it became something fantastic? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think they considered the inflation because, yes, they did. But then, uh, even if the inflation was there, but you can see that there was threefold increase, not because of the inflation alone. It was because the estimates were not gathered uh, nicely. Okay. So that's the, you can give like, above inflation is there something that was, there was not enough planning and not enough uh, cost estimates gathered yes. because the scope wasn't gathered well. Yeah. So I think inflation, in, inflation is a different criteria, but the basic criteria of estimating the cost and gathering the scope completely was not done at the first place. Yeah, this question back. Yeah, uh, back to the first question, I think one of the lessons learned is we, when we do project management, we need to define what success is through KPIs, key performance indicators. They, are, they should be part of the project planning. And this will actually, once we get all the stakeholders' approval on those KPIs, we can actually easily define, quote unquote, easily define success. The, K the success of the project. Is it a successful project or, or not? Yeah, so there's no mixed feelings. So you so basically there's no manage mixed against the numbers. About defining success. So is there a question? It's, it's just a comment. No, I think there is a uh, second, <coughs> second row. We have a somebody waiting. Yeah, um, I'm always amazed by these huge scope projects and how they conduct these lesson learns after the fact. To me, it's like tuning the race car after the race is over. <laughs> is there, what benefit would you guys have seen from doing a lessons learned of other organizations, other large events of this scale, prior to the start of even the plan, so that they have a good concept of what they need to do with the plan and how they need to avoid the pitfalls that other people trapped, fell into? Yeah, uh, well, you're absolutely right about that. So uh, I think the, one of the major drawbacks uh, of kind of what the failures happened uh, was that in India, this large scale product project in sports has never took place before. But I believe that they could have asked for some other assistance like case studies, calling of advisors from different countries who have done these things contractors from different places who have, you know, done this in past. Uh, so that was one of the very major factor, and that could be one of the things that should be taken care of in future. Back row. Uh, I believe in the new preparing numbers from the, like, what, 2008 to 2010, one of the numbers I've seen the state council was security, and that usually is a budget that blows up, especially post 9-11. How do they manage to keep security exactly on budget? Or at least well, according to three years. Can you repeat the oh, slide? I can answer that. Yeah, you can I, answer I, I might be wrong. I might need yeah. to repeat the answer. This one? Yeah, so you can answer. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah, the the security was always a concern because it was in India and prior to 9-11 there were also some terrorist attacks back in India. Right. So when the other people were means uh, when the other nations were uh, coming to participate. So their, uh, their leaders or the, uh, the sports uh, head uh, made the comment before, prior to that, that we want the security to be the, of the highest notch. So they maintained the security from the first level itself. And they, they had uh, three tier of security. And they have assured that the security will be the of highest notch. So it was always a always their concern. So that's why the budget didn't go much up uh, concern to security. And, and others have gone up because of the, uh, because of the 
things they have mentioned earlier, my colleagues. I think that again uh, uh, is based on the same thing that if you have experience and uh, done those things before. So in security, I would believe that India is m much experienced because of a lot of uh, terror activities happening and they are, they are familiar with what kind of places they want to cover up, what kind of, how many forces they would need uh, to cover up the uh, key places and to secure them. Excellent. So I would say that, that they, all, they also have kind of experience in that. Uh, sorry, we just have time for one last question, and one of the judges <laughs> wanted to ask a question. DJ. <laughs> I think uh, what I wanted to know was that mm. the data, that the lessons learned, is that, that was a question actually raised by another person here as well, which is a very, very important thing. And the plan, during the planning stage, one should gather all that data of the lessons learned from previous events and go over that. Do you know that was done at all? Or sometimes that is done only as an exercise, but the people making decisions don't listen to it. They just uh, do it I just know. for the sake of doing it. Do you know it, whether it was done or whether or it was not listened to? Like one of the uh, one of the lessons that we covered is the paced approach. So waste approach was discussed. We, it was planned. But it was not followed, yeah. Yes, it was not followed. And also, so as an example, this the first committee was initially dissolved. And then there was another committee which was formed because of the slow pace of work, because they couldn't get the work done initially. Was, do you know if there was a real champion for this project? <laughs> Sorry, uh, could, you de could you define what you mean by champion? <laughs> <laughs> champion is, uh, champion so is a word. Champion is a word, actually, in my opinion, that I have used does not appear even, even in PIMBOK. The closest word you see in PIMBOK is a sponsor. Yeah. Yes. And I'm talking sponsor. about a champion who removes the roadblocks whenever it comes. We were a champion, but the cost was our less statement in India. Like, in in India. India. It looks like it wasn't because it kept changing, yes. right? The, yeah. the ownership kept changing. That, that, and I yeah. think that is one of the main okay. reasons. We, we, are, we are over time, but another judge wanted to ask the final question. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it, it's built on these other things, too. And I, I just want to uh, I, I clarify. Was there an oversight by a governance body? Yeah, initially, it was meant to be the organizing committee, but as time went on, this committee was changed to a non-government registered society. So it was a non-profit. So a non-profit, non non yes. Yeah. So when they, that happened, the like, coordination started to weaken. Actually, when they were running out of time, they started uh, uh, segmenting the project and giving to different vendors to go ahead of time, means to catch up with the time so that they can complete within the within the deadlines. So that's how it got segmented eventually. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much everybody. Thank you.